this right here is the biggest technological improvement in over a hundred years of wiring electrical receptacles. If you look at the side, you see levers. No screw terminals. So why did they get rid of the screw terminals? Well, this is a safety upgrade. So what the manufacturer has done here with this new generation of outlet is they've taken the wildly popular technology of the Wago 221 lever nuts. They know you guys love them once you've used them and they've put them in to their outlets. And I think they're onto something. So another big advantage for getting rid of those screw terminals on the sides of your electrical outlet is when you're using a metal box because anytime metal touches metal, you can create a short and we want to avoid that. That is an electrical hazard and it's dangerous. And that is why all of the electrical connections here are contained at the back of the device and you have no exposed metal parts because that is dangerous. Your traditional outlets, you'll know if you stick anything in there, you are going to get zapped. You're gonna get electrocuted. And that is why for generations, parents have been using these little plastic safety tabs to insert into your outlets. Well, with the new ones, you don't have to do that because if you insert an object into one of the prongs here, you're gonna notice that there are little shutters that close. It's not gonna allow you to insert anything for safety. That is called tamper resistant. And that is stamped TR there at the top, so you know. This one also is a 15 amp receptacle. So those shutters are only gonna open when you have two prongs going in at the same time with equal pressure. So that means if you go in at an angle, like that, it's not gonna work. Straight on, that is a big improvement for parents. So if you have more than one receptacle in a box, it's actually quite hard to line these up sometimes, especially if you have a regularly cut drywall. But take a look at the tails on the new receptacle. They are not only longer, they're wider. So if you have an old house, it makes lining up your electrical outlets very simple because there's a T and G system and they simply fit into place. The advantage here is that's gonna make your wall plates sit flush and it's gonna make lining them up super, super easy. Massive time saver here. I love this. What do you think? Here's a quick tip for you. Behind this white door is a copper tab. Be sure to pull it out with pliers to create two separate circuits, like when your outlet is wired to a switch. And to prep your wires on the back of your receptacle, you'll find your strip gauge so you can cut your wires to the proper length. Now, let's get on to the wiring. Okay, so taking a look at our electrical box, I can already see right off the bat, we have an illegal situation here because our electrical box is recessed in behind the drywall, but we can fix that right now. Power is off, we're good. And now, I'm gonna use my insulated screwdriver, loosen our screw terminals here, and these are our black wires, and then remove the wires safely. And they're looped. Now to replace the receptacle, this is our neutral side and I'm doing the same thing. So on our neutral side here, the white wires, I'm just gonna loosen the screw terminals here and then our ground wire and then I'll release the wires. Now once you've removed your electrical outlet, it is now safe to take your pliers and straighten out all your wires. You can also use needle nose pliers too if you have them on hand, those work great. But you can see right now I have an illegal electrical box here because it's in behind our drywall. So how do you fix this? Because I work in old houses, I have these on hand. These are called box extenders and this is the legal way to bring your electrical box so it's up flush with your drywall. We cannot have any openings or penetrations along the side of the electrical box because that presents a fire hazard. So 
So I'm just gonna slip that through my wires and then press it into your drywall box. Now to wire any type of receptacle, we always start with the ground wire. So I've actually extended my ground wire because it was too short using a wago so that I have more room to maneuver. So to make your first connection, you're going to grab your exposed copper wire. Green is for ground and the point of entry is this port at the back. All the ports are at the back of your receptacle. So we're gonna start by inserting your ground wire into the outlet, push it in all the way and then close the lever. That click, they've made it audible so you know you've made a solid connection and of course, you just wanna pull on that to confirm that it is indeed secure. Next step, we're gonna move on to the neutral wire, which in electrical are these white wires right here. Again, my ports are open. You're gonna take your wire and insert it at the back of your receptacle. Close it. Second white wire, we're gonna put that in here because we have two white wires and two blacks. You may only have one white and one black. And then we're gonna close it just like that. So once you've made your neutral connections, it's now safe to open up the levers on the black side. In electrical, black means hot. They will carry the power. So we're gonna push this in all the way and then close it. And again, it's really important when you're making these connections to not have any exposed copper. See that? If you have any exposed copper at the back of your receptacle, that is an incorrect wiring installation. You gotta push it in all the way because the insulation protects the wires. Most importantly though, we are going to test this receptacle to make sure that it is indeed wired correctly. You're gonna tuck in your wires into your electrical box. Now what I like already is that we have no exposed terminals on the sides and everything is self-contained internally so there are no exposed metal parts. So that is a bonus, a plus. I'm gonna tuck those wires in and push it in to our electrical box. This is a critical point, don't miss this step. Just like your electrical inspector would do, you should do the same. So are the new receptacles worth it? Well, older receptacles have more steps involved and with more steps involved in installation, that's more potential points of failure. So anytime you have an electrical device like a receptacle that makes it easier and there's fewer steps in the installation process, that makes it safer for you, especially as a DIYer. And for all of our viewers that have used lever connectors before, you know that this technology, if you've used it before, is the way that electrical devices are going. You're gonna see this in all of your electrical switches, in your receptacle, no doubt. Why? Because homeowners, DIYer consumers, we want this stuff because once you install this, you're gonna realize it's a huge advantage. So more importantly though, I wanna know what you think. Please let us know in the comments. Would you buy this? Do you like it? It's, oh yeah, Econopax. If you buy it in bulk, these are $2 each. What do you think? Is it worth it for you? Let us know, I love hearing from you. And if you want to install some GFCIs, you know that green light at the bottom of a GFCI? It indicates safety, but what's that all about? You can check it out in this video right here.